Let's, uh, let's get started. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, the idea of the session is that we can share with you a little bit more about uh, a recent survey that the forum has conducted into the youth of ASEAN and the way that the youth is thinking about their future um, and particularly about the wider region, the ASEAN region, and whether they, what, their, what their views are towards the integration story happening in ASEAN, whether it's something they believe in, they think it's positive, um, and how that translates into policy priorities for government leaders uh, and others in the region. Um, I will be uh, joined up on the stage by uh, another two um, uh, panelists, if you like. Um, the first is Nick Nash, to my left. Uh, Nick is the group president of a company based in Singapore called C Group. Um, it's recently rebranded. Up until last week, it was known as Garena, but it's now known as C. And it's a, an IT company um, involved in um, shopping and online gaming um, and various other, and payments, um, uh, a whole portfolio of different internet activities. And um, when we did this survey, we actually uh, worked in partnership with, uh, with Nick and we used his online platform, which reaches almost 80 million people across ASEAN. So we thought that this was a fantastic way to connect with the youth. Um, I think all of you are aware that the youth of ASEAN are increasingly connected to the internet. Um, there's about 320 million already people already online. Um, that's growing by about 124,000 a day. So the online population is, is, is growing at an incredible pace. And so the youth in particular are connected and we thought that this was a very appropriate way to reach out to the youth and to try to get their views. So we're very grateful to Nick um, and to C Group for helping us with that. Um, just a little bit of context um, to this survey. The World Economic Forum runs a group called the, the Re ASEAN Regional Strategy Group. And this is made up of 15 CEOs, 10 ASEAN government ministers, and some academics and other voices. And the idea is that this regional strategy group, because it's made up of business and government and academia, um, it's, it's, a, it's a group that shapes the thinking at the forum about Southeast Asia and shapes our agenda and what we should be doing in the region, how we can use the World Economic Forum platform to try to do good things in the region. And Nick is actually um, one of the members of our, of our regional strategy group, alongside many other business leaders. And one of the things that the group suggested we do is try to get a flavor of what the youth of ASEAN think. What are their priorities? Um, and in particular, how do they view the ASEAN integration process? And so that was the sort of the origins of this survey. Um, we did it um, over the past few weeks. Um, and we got a very good response. We've got about um, 20, nearly 24,000 respondents across six ASEAN countries, um, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam. 70% um, were men, but 30% were female. So not a perfect gender balance, but um, I think reasonably representative um, of, of both genders. And it was young. The, the typical age of the respondents was about 18 to 20. Um, in fact, between 16 and 22, but so it was definitely reaching out to young people. And I think what was important was that it, they had a, a, a mixed background. About half of them have a university degree and the other half do not. So it's not only the educated, um, the wealthy or the elite, it's a, a much broader spectrum of people. So I think it is, given the numbers there, truly representative of ASEAN youth. And there were some very interesting results that came out. Um, and I'll just run you through um, some of them. But you have the, if you can't see the slides, then uh, you do have the deck um, in front of you. In fact, I think it's very unlikely you'll be able to see the slides. Um, I mentioned the growth of the online population here. Um, and that's clearly reflected in, in this set of results here. Um, with so many people, so many of the young people moving online, um, it's, it's, it's unsurprising to see that uh, they spend a significant part of their lives living through and on the internet. Um, about a third spend more than seven hours a day on the internet, um, and more than half collectively spend more than five hours a day. So this is a generation really living their lives uh, online and through digital platforms. 
which again, valid, I think, um, is, is another reason why we wanted to connect with them for this survey through uh, the internet. So they live their lives online, and increasingly, that's where they get their information. That's where their trusted source of news comes from. Uh, and uh, the chart on the left here compares old school media, like television and print, with new sources like Facebook and YouTube and uh, Instagram and so on. And you can see that considerably more now get their sources of news from online um, platforms rather than traditional media. 63% um, say they get their news uh, and information from Facebook. So clearly this region is transforming at incredible speed and embracing new forms of, of, of uh, interaction and new sources of intelligence and information. Uh, and policymakers need to recognize and respond to that. Um, we asked, um, uh, we've sort of probed into this a bit further. Um, and we, we wanted to find out um, how important it was for the youth of ASEAN to sort of keep up with information um, and to be connected uh, globally. And I think that uh, the results are fairly supportive of the view that they, they are becoming increasingly um, globalized. They are not thinking only in terms of their local community or their local country. They are plugged into what's happening at a bigger scale. Um, and the, the charts you can see here show you that uh, a significant proportion find keeping up with global news very, very important. And I think what's even more important is that many of them feel that uh, globalization is a force for good. Um, they feel that the flow of information and goods and people around the world is positive for them and positive for their society. And that's obviously a different narrative to what you see playing out in other parts of the world. You look at Europe, you look at America, there's a lot of distinctly anti-globalization um, flavor uh, feeling. But here in ASEAN, and I suspect in the wider Asia region, but certainly our survey in ASEAN suggests that globalization is still perceived as something that's beneficial to their lives and delivering positive change. Um, so I think that was something that was perhaps a little bit surprised us, the positive feeling towards globalization. When we look at um, how they feel about their lives, I think another important thing that came out of the survey was a sense of optimism and positivity. Um, most people, most young people, feel confident in ASEAN that their lives um, will be successful. They look ahead and they see uh, they have reason to be optimistic. Um, they think that their lives are going to go well. Um, about uh, nearly 70% think that they're going to have a better life than their parents. And that's always a traditional measure of, of rising middle class and, uh, and growth in, in, uh, in prospects and so on. Whereas in the West now, if you ask youths, you'd get a lot of them saying that they don't expect to have um, a better life. I think in ASEAN, that optimism is still firmly in place. People do believe that the future is bright. Uh, and I think that's very important, again, for policymakers. And that they feel there's opportunities to make a difference uh, and to improve their lives. So ASEAN youth, on the whole, quite optimistic. And I suppose you'd expect that to be the case, given that it's a region of strong growth uh, and reasonably good prospects. Then we went on and we asked youth about um, how they feel about ASEAN. And this is perhaps, I think, where we were most surprised in the sense that there was very high levels of awareness about ASEAN and the ASEAN integration project. So 90% of the young people had heard about ASEAN. They heard about it from a variety of different sources, from the news, from the school, from friends, and so on but there was very high awareness. Um, and in line with that, there was a very strong sense, a very strong belief that ASEAN was going to be positive for their lives, that it was going to deliver positive change. Um, so three quarters of people said that they felt that their country would be better off by being in ASEAN. Um, and furthermore, we asked them whether at a personal level they felt being, ASEAN, being part of ASEAN was good. And there, two-thirds said, yes, we believe that being part of ASEAN will make my career better and my job prospects better. So this is a very interesting result because I think there's a general narrative that the youth and the, and the population generally in ASEAN don't really follow it, don't understand it, aren't really aware of it. Um, and if they are aware of it, are not particularly positive. But our survey suggests that's not the case. There's high awareness and people feel optimistic and positive about it. So if you're a policymaker, and maybe in the past you've been concentrating on just raising awareness around ASEAN, now perhaps it's a time to move from building awareness to action, to actually driving integration at a faster pace uh, and in a more meaningful way. 
Um, of course, building awareness will continue to remain important, but maybe now is the time to move beyond that and be a bit more um, ambitious in the integration aspirations. Um, just a few final things to, to mention. Um, we asked people whether they felt part of an ASEAN community. 70% um, agreed, yes, we're part of an ASEAN community. Um, we asked people, again, linked to globalization, how confident they feel to uh, compete in a global world, and the vast majority feel that they are able to compete. So there is this strong sense of being open um, and integrating with the world, and particularly the region, is going to be um, beneficial for them. Um, I'll, uh, I'll skip over this slide. There is, um, it's, this is more about uh, asking what do the youth use the internet for, obviously shopping and information. Um, the chart on the right there shows you that uh, this asks about online or shopping habits, whether you largely shop online or offline or both. You can see that as this young population becomes more internet connected, online and e-commerce is growing significantly. And we're really at the start of that story as more and more people join the internet. Um, I wanted to end just with a, with a few um, more, I suppose, quirky things that came out of it. Um, in ASEAN, um, food is, is always very important. Every country has its own food, and every country is fiercely proud of their own food, and rightly so. ASEAN has fantastic food. Um, and we know that if you ask any ASEAN citizen what's their favorite food, in general, they'll always say their own food. Uh, but in our survey, we asked them to name not only their first, but also their second favorite. And what you can see on the slide here is their second favorite. So um, it strips out the sort of the bias of, of the choosing their home. And um, there's a clear winner. ASEAN citizens love Thai food. Um, they, they pick their own food as their number one, but when picking a second food, generally they will pick Thai. Of course, in Thailand, um, they have to choose a different one outside their country, um, and there they choose Singaporean. And that may well be that they love Singaporean food, um, Hainanese chicken rice and things like that. Or it may well be that having visited Singapore, they've experienced Singapore hawker centers, which are very good and, and have a whole variety of food. So we're not sure exactly what that means, but um, there's certainly, I think, uh, uh, some interesting, um, uh, interesting stories there that you can explore. Or it could just be that Singapore has good Thai restaurants. <laughs> it could be that Singapore has good Thai restaurants, yes. Um, and then the final thing, just to mention, um, we asked uh, the ASEAN youth which countries they admired the most. And uh, in first place was Singapore, second place was Thailand, uh, and in third place was Vietnam. So uh, some interesting results there. And I think one of the things that we're hoping to do um, at, for the ASEAN Regional Strategy Group at the forum is to conduct this survey more frequently, perhaps on a yearly basis, and then we can track trends over time and see how perceptions around ASEAN and other things indeed um, change um, from year to year. So that's just a, a brief look at the results. Let me hand over to Nick to share some of his own interpretations around this. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Nash. I'm the group president of C, uh, which is the combined entity of uh, the Garena entertainment platform Shopee for e-commerce and AirPay uh, for financial services. It's our great pleasure and honor to, to partner with my friend Justin in the forum to help do the survey, and we've made a commitment to the forum to help with this on an annual basis to really track the growth of ASEAN's evolving consumer tastes and, as important, the, the deepening, we hope, of the ASEAN interconnectivity. I'll make two observations, uh, both of which are quite, quite uh, optimistic and, and quite, quite positive. The first is we share and, uh, and cherish the observation that Justin has made about uh, the optimism of, of Southeast Asia, and it does, in fact, in many ways, uh, uh, tell a different narrative than what is often described as a, a disillusionment, perhaps, among, among millennials and among Generation Z. Quite the opposite. I think there's a tremendous sense of, uh, of enthusiasm for what the future will bring, and as much so a sense of shared destiny and a sense of hard work that will be required to get there. We find that very gratifying and, I think, very optimistic for the future. I think, secondly, uh, we feel that, as Justin points out, the time has now come to move from shared consensus building around ASEAN, which is now 
mission accomplished to shared action taking and growth around what the ASEAN story and destiny means. And in particular, we'd highlight the fact that in a world where the vast majority of young people seek to get their news and their shopping and their entertainment through the internet and mobile more specifically, that probably has implications for economic structures and models, whether it be ownership limits in different countries or the way in which trade happens, it feels to us more and more that a shared ASEAN destiny is beginning with an online foundation and how we think about the way in which we support entrepreneurs, the way in which we support economic growth probably has opportunities to adapt uh, and evolve to reflect this wonderful connected Southeast Asian region. So with that, thank you again, Justin, for, for your tremendous efforts on this and we look forward to doing this on a very annual basis. Um, I'd like to open it up to, to, to you and to see if there's any questions that you might have about uh, the survey or um, the uh, evolution even of, of the, the, the online uh, world in, uh, in Southeast Asia. Yes. I'm Sivita from BTV News. So you are so is, uh, you know, the use of Asian, uh, the, in my Singapore, and Thailand, and Vietnam the most. Uh, why they uh, admire those three countries the most? What, what, what kind of thing? They just looking for the food or the study, what, what, what kind of things? Uh, well, it, it's interesting. We, Nick and I were talking yesterday and we realized that uh, in, in designing the survey, we'd asked about food, but it, there are indeed many, many other things that we could have asked about. Um, which country um, do you admire for its um, manufacturing or for its fashion or for many, many other things? That, and I think in future we will explore um, a bit more in detail some of the things that people do admire about different countries. The question you're referring to was just very, very top level. Which country do you most admire? And we didn't ask them why. We didn't ask which aspects of the countries they admire. Um, so trying to work out why they chose particular countries would be pure guesswork. But in the case of, of Singapore, for example, it's clearly been um, the most successful in terms of driving economic development. It has the highest per capita GDP. And so it may well be that youth look at what Singapore has achieved, find that admirable, um, and that may be the reason, but we'd, we'd be speculating because I don't actually know why people are making those choices. Uh, Nick, I think, have any uh, I think that's very wisely put, Justin, and perhaps it's a good encouragement for us in next year's survey to add a few more questions around why they might feel that way. But I would hypothesize that those three countries are also amongst the leaders in Southeast Asia in openness whether it's for tourism, whether it's for business connectivity, supply chain connectivity, as in the case of Thailand. So in many ways, perhaps our youth are telling us something, which is that they link respect and they link admiration to a degree of interconnectivity and openness at a country level. Yeah, and I suppose the, the more open a country is, the more likely is that someone from a different country will have heard about you, interacted with you, know about you, and so that openness creates connections, understanding, which may then feed through into recognition and admiration. Any, uh, any other questions? Yeah. Hi, I'm Jessica from Eco Business in Singapore. I'm really curious about this um, part of the survey where you say there are opportunities for me to make a difference in my society. As a publication that's concerned on sustainable development, I would really be curious as to like, were there any details on what they mean by make a difference? Is that in support of, for example, sustainable development in ASEAN, or is it supporting responsible businesses? In what way do they feel they can make a difference? Um, well, the, the question again was, was fairly open-ended. Um, it was, but I think the idea was that um, we wanted to explore whether millennials um, feel um, that they should, their, their, their role in life, their career, their job, should be delivering more than just a financial return to themselves. Should it be delivering a wider social return to society? And you know, we often hear from surveys in other parts of the world that millennials now feel that they should have more of a, uh, a purpose to their job rather than just earning an income. And we wanted to just sort of explore a little bit within an ASEAN context whether the youth of ASEAN also feel that sense of purpose that they want to be Doing, doing good as well as, 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 as uh, helping themselves. And I think the results suggest that that is the case. There is a growing sense of community and the wider society and the fact that um, the youth of ASEAN feel they should be 
uh, doing work that has a, a broader purpose than just uh, earning income? I think that's, that's well put. And uh, if you parse the question, it says, there are opportunities for me to make a difference in my society. So effectively, there's two parts that are linked together in an and statement. One is, there are opportunities for society to improve, and there are opportunities for me to be a part of it. And I think in many ways, you're capturing some of the correlation to the fact that people feel more connected. They feel more included, they feel more inclusive about personally playing a role to make a difference rather than simply driving by every day. And we find that very optimistic and very, very, very positive. Do you, do you, do you find that uh, you're, you're a business that's growing at tremendous speed, you're, you're a, a new young company hiring young people, do you find within your business that the people you're trying to recruit um, have that sense of, of purpose beyond just having a job? It's extraordinary. It really is. And uh, you know, I, I would say that we feel blessed that in a time of peacetime, there's never been a greater sense of mission orientation here in Southeast Asia. And that's a great thing, uh, that absent some sort of dramatic crisis that's uh, befalling all of us, our youth have a real sense of purpose to, to really improve the life for themselves. And uh, I'll share with you just one simple data point in our business, which is you know, oftentimes when we pay an employee a bonus or when their equity has achieved some degree of value over time, we often ask them, what do you plan to do with that? And one of the most common things we hear is, I'd like to buy a slightly better apartment for mom and dad. And that just, I think, gets to the heart of the optimism of this region and a sense of filial piety, but at the same time, a sense of reinvestment in our communities, which is very positive. Any other questions you'd like to put? Okay, well, let's wrap this up. Um, Nick, thank you very much oh, for joining us. Oh, sorry, we have a final... Oh, uh, oh, sorry, we have one, one final question. Two questions, perhaps. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jin Pan Yuan. I'm from Pin and TV. And I have two questions. First of all, why, uh, why do you select a sample from only six countries? Uh, you exclude uh, Myanmar, Cambodia, Brunei. Yep. And the second question uh, is that uh, most of the youth in the survey they rely the news on, uh, for, for example, YouTube, Facebook, uh, website, or Instagram. And and do they mention how? Uh, the reliability of the news that they got from those platforms because right now the trends of the fake news on online is keep, increase, keep increasing. So, so do they mention how they filter the news? How do they think it is the fake news or it is the, the news that they should rely on? Yep. Um, before we answer, just to welcome uh, Ibu Mari Pangestu to, to, the, to the stage, Professor of International Economics at the University of Indonesia. Um, uh, I'm happy to take the first question. Yes, please. Prefer. It's entirely my fault on the first one, <laughs> uh, mea culpa, because our business tends to have a greater concentration of users in those particular six countries, and we felt that we would not be able to deliver a statistically rigorous sample group of enough scale to, for the data to be meaningful to share with you in countries like Laos, Cambodia, Myanmar. Now, we have begun uh, developing a user base in Myanmar, and I sincerely hope we'll develop the other two over time, in which case we will be the first to offer that user base to Justin for future surveys. <laughs> well, one interesting thing to, to add, though, is that the, although the respondents come from those six countries, um, there was a, one of the questions asked people what their nationality was, and there was a significant minority of people who um, came from the four countries you mentioned that are not in the survey, like Myanmar and Cambodia, Brunei and Laos, that were working in Singapore or Malaysia or Indonesia. And I think it suggests that um, there is already, um, in many ways, a high degree of cross-cultural integration. You do have many ASEAN citizens working in other countries that are not their home country. Um, and obviously that's much more the case in some countries than others. But the results, uh, if you look at, for example, the people from Indonesia, they're by no means, the respondents are not all Indonesian. There are many other ASEAN nationalities working there, and that's the same across the board. So um, we can't, we, we, there weren't enough results to be statistically significant for those countries, but there were and many of them working in the, in the countries. Um, in terms of the, in terms of the, the, the fake news, um, I don't know if, uh, if, if uh, Ibu Mari, whether the, 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 the question is that um, the ASEAN youth of today look to online sources for their news and their information like Facebook and Instagram and YouTube mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, and um, 
uh, questions around whether that's reliable and whether that could lead to some issues in ASEAN that we see in other markets where the, the trust associated with news um, is, is being uh, eroded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the issue of uh, where youth is getting their information was actually one thing that I had in, in we had in mind when we were doing the survey. And uh, similar surveys of millennials in other countries have shown that uh, what they do is they tend to visit sites which reinforce their view. You know, so the I, the, the question being, you know, are we seeing a generation that does is not open-minded and not knowing what else is going on in the world just because they're visiting sites which are only what they like and what reinforce their view? And I think there was a question on that. I, I can't remember. I remember there was a uh, a question on that, uh, and I think it was like the, quite a high percentage mm. visit sites which reinforce their uh, or what they're interested in, what their um, mm. uh, views are, yeah. and and that it, it's not so much about fake news, but about you know the the ability for you to to be open minded and and know uh, the other the other side of the of a, of a debate you know say like globalization for instance what was the half yeah yeah on half is it forty six percent forty six percent uh, exposes me to a new idea, which is much higher actually than what they had found in the US or Europe, you know. Uh, so that's good news. So we are, we are more open-minded. Mm -hmm. So I think the way to, uh, to address fake news is your ability to be, be able to distinguish, right, which sites are actually delivering the right uh, information. Uh, and the, your ability not to just go to the sites where that's finding to reinforce your views, but to look at other sites. So maybe that's, that's a short answer to that. And, and what we find at a practical day-to-day -day level is that an online piece of news, whether it be a video clip or a small article or, or whatnot, often is followed by a comments section. So many people spend as much time reading the comments as they do the original mm -hmm. piece, which gives them a sort of sense of crowdsourced footnoting or on what may or may not be accurate or what may or may not be established fact. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, we have run out of time, and I know that uh, both, both our panelists have to get to another session uh, in just a few minutes, so I'm going to draw this to a close. Um, but thank you very much for joining us, and um, uh, hopefully the, uh, the survey provides some, some useful insights for you. Thank you. Thank you all.